Do you know your medicine? Weed Maps and SC Laboratories bring you an educational series on the science of clean and safe cannabis. Today's cannabinoid profile is on cannabinol. Cannabinol, or CBN, is another cannabinoid found in the cannabis plant, and it appears to result from a breakdown of THC, so it's considered a breakdown product. It's found in the plant in varying amounts. It's a little bit different than some of the other cannabinoids in the fact that it's, it's not naturally synthesized by the plant, but it's more of a breakdown or degradation product or a metabolite of THC. CBN is psychoactive and it's what gives most of the sedative effect of, of cannabis. You hear a lot of indica versus sativa. CBN is actually what's making you sleepy. And CBN can be found in any cannabis. It's produced over time or with heat. So older cannabis or cannabis that's been stored for a long time is gonna have a high level of CBN. It also appears to work as an anti-convulsant. It has antibacterial properties and it also has anti-inflammatory properties. It also appears to stimulate osteocytes, which are bone cells. It's being looked at for treatment of bone disorders such as osteoporosis. It also appears to inhibit skin cell formation. And some people say that this may have some benefit down the line once we really understand what it's doing in skin disorders such as psoriasis. I'll show you how CBN is synthesized in the plant. CBN starts with gyreal pyrophosphate and allotolic acid, like most of the cannabinoids. Those two come together in an enzyme-catalyzed reaction. They form cannabigibarellic acid, CBGA, and CBGA folds upon itself into rings and makes THCA with using THCA synthase, which is an enzyme. The THCA decarboxylates, we lose that carboxylic acid right there, and form THC. THC, over time or with heat, will degrade into CBN, and all that's happening is, is we're we're losing hydrogen atoms and forming double bonds in this ring right here. That causes a weaker interaction for this compound with the CB1 and CB2 receptors. That weak interaction is what leads to the sedative effect and, and the sleepiness, drowsiness associated with CBN. When cannabis is tested in a testing facility, CBN can be measured and usually it's under 1%. A patient can actually look to see if that's something that they're interested in a higher percent or lower percent because it does cause sedation. SC Labs tests for CBN using a high performance liquid chromatograph also known as an HPLC. The HPLC is a much more sensitive instrument than the other instrument that's used to test for cannabinoids sometimes called the GC or gas chromatograph. We use the HPLC because it doesn't degrade any of these compounds, like the GC. The GC uses heat, so it degrades some of these compounds, whereas the HPLC can test them in their natural state. The HPLC is, is what's accepted by International Union Office of Drugs and Crime, Dutch Pharmacopoeia. The Dutch all have been using HPLC for quite a while now to test for these cannabinoids. What happens with the GC, so we, we've established that, that the CBN is, is formed by either heat or time. Same thing with, with the decarboxylation of this THC. Um, at about 140 degrees Celsius, we start to see a conversion of THC to CBN. Well, the GCs must operate at much higher temperatures, so when you do a test for, with the GC for these cannabinoids, you're going to have a slightly lower CBD number because the CBD with heat will actually can, can be converted to THC. With heat, the THC can then be converted to CBN, so what you're going to see is slightly lower CBD numbers. It's kind of a wash with THC, you might get a slightly lower number, and then with CBN you're going to see a higher number than you would with HPLC testing. Now is that CBN actually in the plant? No, it's, it's a function of the heating process of the GC. And since THC and CBD are degraded with heat, that's why we test for all of our cannabinoids with an HPLC at SC Labs to get a more accurate and precise measurement of what's actually found in the plant.